Mm -hmm. And it seems from the outside that there are quite a few different models of development in India in different states. So uh, um, the Kerala model of land reform uh, several decades ago, West Bengal, I think, has a somewhat different approach. Yeah. And then other states are much more, um, what would you say, pro-capitalist, uh, pro-economic development from a capital development point of view. Would you say that that's accurate? There's a lot uh, of Yes, I, in, in, in one sense, yes. I think there are two or three states, and these are states uh, where the left has been in power. Uh, as you know, India is a union of states, and we have state governments under the central government. The state government's uh, uh, powers are restricted by the government at the center. Nevertheless, we have some, uh, we have some room for maneuver. And uh, the, the first tasks uh, that uh, the state governments under the left have set themselves has been land reform, um, whether in, in Kerala, in uh, West Bengal, and in, uh, and in Tripura, in the small northeastern state of Tripura, too. Uh, so, yeah, that has been, and I think that's made a, that has made uh, in the, to quote a, a rather well-known academic work, it's made life a little better for people for for people in these states. This is not to say that these are the states with the highest incomes, not at all. Um, they are, in fact, they're not. But uh, we have, I think, the left has ensured. Uh, has brought some relief to the people in these states. They've assured, ensured some kind of democratic government. And uh, as you know, both these states have a program of, of decentralized government. In fact, it was West Bengal which introduced, in our system, in the Indian system, we had, uh, we had elections to the parliament and elections to state legislatures. It is only uh, in recent years that elections at the district, um, sub-district and village levels has become part of the constitution. And that has been after the, uh, after uh, West Bengal introduced this. Uh, mm -hmm. You see at the village level, to have a local government without land reform is to actually reproduce the old uh, power structures. Of course, it's better to have elections to local government than, than not. But uh, what we have, what the left has spoken about is sort of walking on two legs in the countryside. Land reform plus local government. And without, without land reform, local government reproduces the old power structures. But without uh, local government, land reform is unable to achieve uh, development at the village level. So I think that's, that's the difference we've made. In Kerala, it's in Kerala, we have greater achievements with, uh, with respect to, uh, with, uh, with respect, for instance, to, to health and uh, education. Uh, these are not things we've achieved at, at, you know, to the same extent in West Bengal. But um, yeah, I think we have, we have made some difference. Mm -hmm. So what I'm hearing you say, Ram, is that the, the major misunderstanding of the Western perception or the, the non-India perception, the major misunderstanding is an assumption of general economic progress. Whereas I think what I'm hearing you say is that in the agrarian sector, there is little to no progress. And that leaves open that there are other forms of economic advancement that are happening in certain areas. Uh, let me not say that there's been no progress. Uh, uh, the, you see, it's uh, one thing which did happen in the uh, in the 1960s was a change in the level of production. Now, uh, so th particularly on the supply side, there in, in 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 Indian agriculture, there was some progress in the post-independence period. The greatest achievement of Indian agriculture over this period, as you as you know is the achievement of a degree of self-sufficiency in cereal production in, this, in the 70s mm -hmm. and 80s. Yes. The, uh, the transformation of what India's leading agricultural scientist once termed as a ship-to-mouth existence 
to levels of product to uh, to levels of productivity and production that signified some kind of break with the past now uh the and uh, the academic uh, mohan rao has an interesting um, discussion of some of the options that were before state power in india during the supply crisis years of the 60s um now one possibility was a reliance on imports this was not uh, in the 60s that was not considered a, you know uh, a the alternative to, to take the a second alternative was a sort of back to the past policy of sanctifying traditional agriculture and rural social systems this too was not on the agenda in india uh, much though the dear dear though such an agenda is to the you know cultural relativists and postmodernists um the uh, another was a policy of building on the best that is you go to those areas of india which already had irrigation and some infrastructural facilities and uh, build on that the the last alternative was a policy that saw agriculture as a strategic system transforming sector with as mohan has said uh, a reorientation away from the supply side to the centrality of property relations and mass demand as propellants for the whole economy that last bit is a quote uh, the centrality of property relation then mass demand as propellants for the whole economy now clearly it's a it's a great tragedy that the last alternative was never considered ultimately the the policy that was taken up was the policy of building on the best uh india invested heavily in um, in what uh, the other another leading economist uh prabhat patnaik has said that it invested heavily in agriculture but it created three kinds of the green the so called green revolution that resulted uh, created three kinds of new inequality inequalities as between regions inequalities has been as between crops because only rice and wheat were given emphasis and inequalities as between classes uh so i am not suggesting that uh, the green revolution and the productivity and production increases that took place are to be minimized at all not at all it's it was a great achievement the uh, but uh, it was not the green revolution was not created as say in china or in vietnam or other countries it was not established on the basis of institutional change of thorough going institutional change so that made a difference um so what we are doing is we have in the last 2 years we, this is my project for my 50s that uh, we are going we are divide we generally have an understanding of you know the vast diversity of agro ecological zones in india um i mean you have both in terms of you know the sort of development of the forces of production and in terms of the modernization of the relations of production you have an absolutely very wide range very wide spectrum in india from areas of great backwardness to areas of great technological development and you could have areas of tech, great technological development with very very backward relations of bondage 